In July of 2022, just a few months after we first met, Victoria and I made our way to the very top of Alaska and started cycling south, with no idea the adventure we were in for. Hey. <laughs> I think we should stop see? as soon as we see a good house thing. Oh. Oh. Man, you look like a banger bun. <laughs> the route we had planned on going is a lot more dangerous than we thought it would be. The ultimate dream was to cycle from Alaska to Argentina, the entire length of the Americas. Well, at least that was my dream. Victoria hadn't owned a bike since she was 11 years old, so she didn't yet know if she'd like it or not. Whoa. And since she was fairly out of practice, we spent a couple of weeks in town slowly building up strength. I cannot feel my legs. <laughs> and after a lot of blood, sweat and tears, she was feeling confident, so we hitchhiked up to Dead Horse, the end of the road, and set off south. Our first section would be two weeks along the Dalton Highway. 512 miles from the Arctic Ocean, snaking its way through some of the most remote and challenging wilderness on Earth. An ambitious choice for Victoria's first attempt at bikepacking, but she was handling it like a pro. How is it in English? Caterpillar. Caterpillar? Caterpillar. Caterpillar? Caterpillar. Caterpillar. We were carrying enough food to take it slow and easy, and after seven days, we made it to Coldfoot Camp, which is basically just a small restaurant and truck stop, but it was a great place to escape the rain. In week two, we were starting to get into the swing of things, and as we crossed the Arctic Circle, our legs were strengthening up for these huge, huge climbs. Is that the help of muffin? To you. Did Don't you, worry about that part. Did you eat this muffin? <laughs> Happy birthday. Alaska is grizzly bear territory, so we hung our food every night to try and keep the bears away from our tent. So far we hadn't seen any for ourselves, but that wouldn't be the case for long. You're looking at two new official Dalton Highway survivors. Completing the Dalton Highway was a huge confidence boost. We might actually be able to do this thing. Woohoo! Woohoo! We took our newfound confidence south because we knew we couldn't leave Alaska without checking out Denali National Park. We ended up pushing our bikes five miles up a braided riverbed to get around a landslide on the park road. But then we had the entire other half of the park to ourselves. What we found was truly wild landscapes and it felt a bit like exploring a national park after the apocalypse. Victoria's just spotted what we think could be an incredible home for the night. Yes! <laughs> we got super lucky finding this unlocked shelter and we were glad we had it because the next morning we had a pretty nosy visitor. Go 
Satisfied with our Alaska experience and with winter on the way, we set our sights east towards Canada along the stunning Denali Highway. We'd been on the road for nearly a month and Victoria was now a seasoned bikepacking veteran. Travelling like this means being comfortable with being uncomfortable most of the time and I was so impressed with how well she was handling it. Being together made those difficult moments so much more fun and I didn't want to jinx it but I was really hoping she'd want to stick around. <laughs> Good morning sunshine! So we've had nothing but rain for the last week on that side of the Alaska range. But this side, absolutely gorgeous. We enjoyed some glorious sunshine for our last few days in Alaska, but it was time to get a move on into Canada, as winter wouldn't be waiting up for us. Canadian border is in about a mile. We rode the Alaska Highway into the Yukon Territory of Canada just as the autumn colours were starting to come through and it was pretty stunning. <laughs> so cool! It was now September and things were starting to get a little chilly. But fortunately, we met Wally, who insisted on giving us some warm gloves for the road ahead. Thank you so much, that's six. Yeah. Well, here. Yeah. There really, really is a Comic Con. A steamer, right? $3.50. Cool. You're not holding that right. How is it? Very good. <laughs> In Whitehorse, we picked up some warmer clothes and boots for the cold weather to come. And our timing was pretty spot on. Everything is frozen. This is definitely the coldest it's been. Show me your gloves. Oh, thanks to Wally. Yes. It was time to make some miles south. So we crossed into the province of British Columbia and headed down the remote Cassiar Highway. This is now officially the Cassiar Highway. You need to be very, very safe. But you can be safe and fashion at the same time. That is a porcupine. It's raining again. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's coming! So beautiful, man. So beautiful. Go, Go on. Go. That's right. Go on. Oh, you needed to hear me. That's the first time I've ever had to take the safety off the best break. Mmm. Why cool man? Mmm. So good. It was starting to become clear that we weren't gonna be able to outrun winter. So we decided to make the most of the nice weather while we had it and make a short detour to the coast to see some big glaciers. Run for Run for those hills, babe. Let go of the dark days. Let go of the world. Make it all up as you dance along, just like we all have. But when we woke up the next morning, instead of the stunning view we were hoping for, we were met with a downpour. The kingdom is yours. God, man. the seas are shown. <laughs> It's like you know just to ride Dive in the water might be lovely Go keep 
We made our way back up to the Cassia and continued on south when Victoria had a decision to make. What have you decided? <laughs> we said that I couldn't decide if I want to go all the way to Argentina until three months Friday. I needed to see for myself if I like it or not. And I love it. So I decided today, three months, I'm going to Argentina. Are you crying? <laughs> And that was that. We were now in this together for the long haul. But little did we know we were about to face our most challenging test yet. With the first snow of the season, winter had finally caught up with us. And almost immediately, temperatures plummeted. So last night was minus five, I believe. Um, felt like it could have been lower. Uh, I was fine, but Victoria didn't sleep all night because she was just so cold. And she was bundled up in all her layers, sleeping bag, sleeping bag liner. Um, and it's only gonna get colder from here. We found ourselves completely out of our depth but after three months of cycling, neither of us wanted to give up here. But that's when something magic happened. Wet and shivering in Fraser Lake, we were invited into Autumn Services office, who let us stay the night. And then they found Katrina, Chris and Jaden to host us in the next town. Well, I guess we'll see you. And then they were able to find Katie to host us in the next one. We got a real taste of the world famous Canadian hospitality and after receiving all of this incredible support, we knew we couldn't give up. But with temperatures set to drop even lower, it was time to put our resilience to the test. In around eight days, it drops to minus 19 Celsius. Which is temperatures we're not prepared for. Um, basically, we need to get to a place called Hope, which is around 650 kilometers from here. So the next week or so, we're gonna be gunning it for Hope, which is a very appropriately named town. If we could just make it to Hope, things would get a lot less cold from there on out. We kept pushing on, but that's when things got serious. I think we should stop. See, as soon as we see a good house though. I think we should stop. Because it's starting to get dangerous. Yes, I cannot see sh <laughs> But our streak of luck would not be ending here. In the middle of the snowstorm, we knocked on the door of the first house we saw and met Gary and Linda. Yeah, sure. How are you guys? You guys stay in here tonight. Oh, no way. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gary. <laughs> we continued on and then Dave and Barb saw us on the road, pulled over, and invited us to stay in their spare room. This little restaurant, the Sugar Shack, let us sleep in their heated basement for the night. And in Spencer's Bridge, Phil pulled up, rolled down his window, and started chatting to us, and then offered us his trailer for the night. You can sleep in as long as you want. Thank you. <laughs> All day if you want. Yeah, Victoria loves to sleep. Each morning we'd pedal off into the cold with no idea where we were going to stay that night but every single time someone came through and took care of us. We made it! <laughs> From here the warmer coastal temperatures would see us all the way south to warmer weather. And after that physically and mentally exhausting stretch, Linda and Gary let us stay in their holiday home in Coltis Lake for a week which was an incredible treat and a much needed rest. Eso, cabrones. Eso. We made our way into Vancouver for a couple days of eating and then got the ferry over to Vancouver Island, which we'd heard was supposed to be snow free year round. But when we got there, we found that that wasn't exactly the case. So instead of the adventurous route we'd planned, we decided to beeline it south to Victoria and hop on a ferry to the USA for a fresh start. This is Victoria, 
the place. We've been riding in the rain and the dark for the last couple of hours, but we made it. We traded Canada's snow and ice for the Pacific Northwest's majestic rainforest. The temperatures here were noticeably warmer and we were so relieved to be able to comfortably wild camp again. We hopped on the iconic Pacific Coast Highway for some easy miles south, but it wasn't long before we'd learned to avoid busy roads like this for good. So our car just went off the road and it went off the shoulder between where we were. And if I was 10 seconds slower, I would be dead basically. Victoria was behind me, but luckily she was like a minute behind. So yeah, we just got very lucky. We were pretty shaken up after this and made the decision to get off the coastal highway as soon as possible. But it was still the middle of winter and with snow everywhere except the coast, that would be no easy task. So we continued on and waited for the right opportunity. Oh! <laughs> Today we have another day of all day rain but the forecast says that this is supposed to be the last day of rain for the next two weeks. So hopefully that's true. With a clear weather window ahead of us, it was go time. Using a snow map, we drew up a route to escape inland to the high desert of northern Nevada. We weren't sure if it would actually be possible, but we decided to give it our best shot. This is probably the last time we'll see the Pacific until somewhere in Central America. That's the last little bit we ever cycle on the 101. The route we'd drawn up to avoid the snow led us to some pretty overgrown roads, but it was just the adventure we needed after so long confined to the highway shoulder. Three X's, don't go that way. God is coming to me. It's, it's because you left your door open. What do you it's, mean? You left it open. Oh my God. You went to pee. God! No. Safely on the other side of the mountains, we cruised into Ashland, Oregon, where Oak Street Cottages very kindly lent us a place to stay for a couple of weeks. We need to celebrate that we crossed the mountains. We've crossed the mountains, we're halfway to Nevada. <laughs> Stop it. We spent a couple of weeks eating well and catching up on editing, and then it was time to hit the road. From here, although it doesn't look like it, we were just a handful of days from reaching the desert. We just had to tough it out through a few long days and freezing nights and a touch of snow and we'd be in the clear. This is where we camped last night little campsite in the town of Cedarville and over there is the desert. We're finally here. We were finally off into the desert wilderness we'd been dreaming of for months. Our bikes were heavy as we are carrying over 20 litres of water but being out in the wild, riding through these huge desert valleys and camping wherever we pleased felt like true freedom. And it was only just the beginning. Andale, wey! Rapido! Woo! So that right there, is Winnemucca. In Winnemucca, Daniel, the owner of Tumbleweed, the company that made our bikes, drove all the way down from their home base in Idaho to camp out with us for the night. Daniel from Tumbleweed has visited us and brought us many gifts. 
The biggest one being Victoria's brand new bicycle. That's a beautiful bike. Something a little burlier for the ambitious routes we'd planned ahead. But she wasn't the only one being spoiled. Look how shiny. New cog, new chain, new chain ring, new cranks. It's like Christmas. Half a muffin, of course. Yay! Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Cool. Well, safe travels. Yeah, drive safe, man. Yeah. Let me know. We'll do. Yeah. We set off into the desert for the world's greatest test ride and set our sights on Death Valley National Park. It's so smooth, it's so nice, I can change from, from 1 to 14 with no problem. Thanks Daniel, thank you so much. <laughs> We spent the next few weeks cruising south through these incredible desert valleys, most days hardly seeing another soul, and we were really enjoying the solitude. But along with the good days came some incredibly tough ones too. What is this? Like being stuck in the mud way out in the middle of nowhere. What has happened here? I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm so stuck, man. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and the occasional reminder that we were still in the middle of winter. It's not too bad. Run for your life! Run! Three dark, <laughs> dark, days. Three dark 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 days. Since they locked me away, it's been three dark days. How cold is it gonna get tonight? Minus eight. It's our very last cold day. So we're going to use all the hand warmers we've got because we're not going to have a use for them after this. <laughs> we're going to put them in our socks. It's been cold as hell in my lonely cell. It's cold as hell. Hello. I gotta say that today is a very hard day. Um, I'm in the worst day of my period and the wind. We have headwind and we're gonna have headwind tomorrow too. Uh, another thing I just wanted to tell you. <laughs> I, I already cried like three times. Sometimes that's just how it is and you just need to keep pedaling I'm afraid. most intense headwind I've ever experienced in my life. We've got another 15 miles to Tonopah and we're moving at like walking speed. Seven days of food. It's a lot of Kit Kats. To get us to Death Valley. What does that mean? It means that everything fits if you know how to put it well. Wow. Vamos. Today is Sunday the 2nd of April and today marks the day that it's officially hot enough to wear shorts and t-shirts. Let's go. In other news, we are carrying around 30 liters of water right now because we've got a three and a bit day stretch to get to Death Valley. Arriving into the baking heat of Death Valley meant that our long winter was officially over. 
Just a few days ago, we were cycling in wind chills of minus five and to suddenly be in 35, it's a very big difference. We took things slow, spent the afternoon in the shade and eventually made it out of the valley and continued on towards Las Vegas. Man, you look like a bug up on me. <laughs> That's exactly where I am. After a couple months of desert roaming, we'd made it to Las Vegas, which was by far the biggest city we'd been in on the whole trip. And we were lucky to stay with a lovely family who hosted us for the week. Bye guys. <laughs> Thank you. We were now getting so close to Victoria's home in Mexico, but we knew we couldn't leave before seeing the Grand Canyon. So before heading south, we set our sights east to see it for ourselves. Beep, beep. Taking it, I'm honest. It's quite big. That's crazy. It was now approaching summer. Things were starting to heat up and Victoria had a newborn nephew to meet down in Mexico. We made a plan to take a nice long break in her hometown of Chihuahua over the summer, so it was time to wiggle our way south to the border and make it there before things got too hot. Just checking the stamps in our passport, which we probably should have done a long time ago. And uh, we don't have much time left. We have exactly two weeks. Exactly two weeks. Not today. I did not know that. Getting very close to Mexico. We're probably like four days out now. It was coming up on 11 months since we first set off from Alaska, and we knew that with crossing into Mexico, everything was about to change. Mexico está a 37 millas. This is officially our last campsite in the USA. And to be honest, after almost a year in the relative security of Canada and the USA, we were a little nervous about how we'd handle it. But we were also incredibly excited about what the next chapter would bring. This was Victoria's home turf and she hadn't been home in a very long time. That's the wall. That's the wall. <laughs> After 11 months of cycling, we have made it to Mexico. Victoria is very happy to be home. 
from here, she was just a few weeks of riding away from reuniting with her family and friends at home in Chihuahua. But getting there wouldn't be easy and traveling through Mexico has its risks. So we were hoping to connect with locals and seek advice along the way so that we could make informed decisions and be as safe as possible. So we just got into this town and we met this guy called Mario who has now offered to let us sleep in his other home. You want to start a wolf? Si. He's going up there somewhere. After a week of riding, we made it to Bacadewachi. We have reached our hottest temperature yet on the trip. My thermometer is reading 41. Uh, and it feels a bit like cycling in an oven. I believe there is a hotel here in town that we're going to try and find and get ourselves a nice cold shower. We got talking with the hotel owners about our trip and asked Oscar his thoughts on our planned route to cross into the state of Chihuahua, as we did with most people we met along the way. And he was definitely pretty concerned about it. He basically explained that our planned route would put us through some particularly dangerous towns that we'd be wise to avoid. He said it's just, honestly, it's just no money, you know, yeah. like it's not worth, not worth it. it. So we got a change of plans. We made to, a decision. Uh, just a lot of people telling us that the route we had planned on going is a lot more dangerous than we thought it would be. So we're going to backtrack to a place called La Mora, which is where we camped on the river. And there's a road that crosses into Chihuahua there that apparently is the safest way across. We'd heard from a few people that the state border between Sonora and Chihuahua was particularly dangerous, so we weren't going to take any chances and went with what we were told was the safest road across. When we got into Pancho Villa, our first town in the state of Chihuahua, we were immediately taken in by this incredible family who gave us a much needed shower and a comfortable bed for the night. They sent us off with our hearts full and a packed lunch. It was just the boost we needed, and now that we were safely across the state line and into Chihuahua, it would be pretty smooth sailing. It was time to get to the city and reunite Victoria with her family and friends. Adios! Chihuahua is extremely beautiful. Although we were still a few days from the city, for the first time in nearly a year, Victoria was approaching familiar territory. This is the town that she spent a lot of her childhood growing up, and she was very excited to show me around. This is new. All this is new. Man, it's even pavement, like all this used to be like, oh, dirt. It was dirt. Yeah. yeah. After spending a nice day reminiscing and exploring, it was time for the home stretch. Mañana llegamos a Chihuahua. Me emociona muchísimo ver a mi familia, a mis amigos, a mis amigas. A... Oh, oh. Vamos. As we approached the city, Victoria couldn't wipe the huge grin off her face. She was about to cycle home from Alaska, and the local cycling community had something pretty special planned to welcome her home. We've got the welcoming committee escorting us into town. Ah, 
Mucho gusto. Mucho gusto. As we rode closer to the city, more and more cyclists joined to welcome her home. And I couldn't help but think back to all the amazing people we'd met along the way that made it possible for us to get this far. Have you ever seen steamers? One way or another, we will find that one drive place for you. What? Are you guys staying here tonight? Oh, no way. You can sleep in as long as you want. Thank you. <laughs> Someone just pulled over and offered us a warm, dry spot to stay tonight. Well, safe travels. Yeah, drive safe, man. Yeah. Let me know. Where are you Pues, empezamos en Alaska. Hace un año. Un año. Sí. Sí. Mucho. Welcome to Chihuahua, my friend. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is crazy. Thank you. Oh, he's got your hat. Oh. Do you want to wear it? Te gusta. <laughs> Te gusta la gorita. <laughs> this is our little apartment here in Chihuahua. This is where I've been sat editing for the last few months while we wait for the heat to die down. And it finally has, so in the next couple days we're actually hitting the road again south. And the plan is still to continue all the way to Argentina, so if you are new here and you'd like to follow along, hit that subscribe button below, and we'll see you in the next one.